Hello! Welcome to another episode of our ESU From the Workbench series. In today's episode, we will be discussing how to create your own locomotive icons for your ESU ECOS 50200 command station. In this tutorial, we will be using the graphics program GIMP to create our own locomotive icons. We recommend GIMP as an image processing program since it is available free of charge and allows professional image processing. It is available at www.gimp.org. How to install GIMP on your PC is explained in the installation of GIMP manual on their website. For this tutorial, we will be using GIMP version 2.8.18. Other versions of GIMP can differ slightly in the processing steps. The prerequisite for creating your own locomotive icon is a photo of the prototype or model of the desired locomotive. It should be a side-on shot. If you are photographing a model, place it on a solid color piece of paper or use a photo box if you have one. In this way, you can achieve a uniform illumination against a neutral background, which will make your editing a lot easier. In this tutorial, we will be using a model of an F-unit locomotive. We will need to make sure that the loco is straight, the background is deleted, and the picture size is correct for your ECOS. In the raw, unedited state, the photo should look similar to this. We can now go to our computer and open up GIMP. Once GIMP opens, you can go to the File menu, choose Open, browse to where you saved your picture that you took of your locomotive, and double click on the file name. Your main image will show in the center, and on the left hand side you will see the toolbar. Any of these tools you can double click on, it will open a dialog box that will give you more information uh, and more options on that particular tool. Step one in our process is checking the color depth. The ECOS requires the image to be in RGB format. To do this, go to the image tool, go to mode, and make sure RGB is selected. Step two, rotating the image. To help facilitate rotating the image, we're going to create a reference line by clicking up here at the top where your ruler is at, hold the mouse button down, and we're just going to drag this virtual line down basically to where your track level would be. Once you have done that, click on the rotate tool and left click on the locomotive picture and hold the mouse button down. A grid will appear as well as a dialog box. You can now go ahead and use the mouse and line up those wheels with that reference line that we created. Doesn't have to be perfect, just try to get it close. When you're happy with it, let go of the left mouse button, come over to the rotate dialog box, Click on Rotate, and take a look and make sure everything's okay. Uh, if you want to make adjustments, just follow this process again. When you're happy with it, click on the Move tool. Click on your reference line, it'll highlight in red, and drag that back up to the ruler at the top. Step 3 cropping the image. Use the rectangle select tool and draw the rectangle around most of the locomotive. Hold the left mouse button down as you click and drag and let the left mouse button go when you're finished. From the image menu select crop to selection. 
much better. We got rid of a lot of that background. Step four is cleaning up this background. We're going to use a combination of the fuzzy select tool and the rectangle select tool to choose this gray background that's not quite uniform. You can also use the control key while you are selecting and it will subtract from the current selection and using the shift key while selecting will add to the current selection. So let's use our fuzzy select tool and I'm going to just click here in the gray area and you can see how it kind of snaps um, to most of that gray area. Not perfectly but pretty close. If I press the shift key you'll see a little plus on my fuzzy select icon. I can click a couple of these areas that it didn't get to get a little closer selection. Doesn't have to be perfect. You can also use the control key and the scroll button on your mouse to zoom in or zoom out. I'm going to come over here and just clean up this uh, manifold here a little bit, but I need to get in closer so I can see what I'm doing. So control key and the scroll button. The reason this happened is the uh, this part of the locomotive is very close to the gray background, so the computer wasn't quite sure what to select. So by using the rectangular select tool and our control key on the keyboard, we can subtract this from our current selection. And again, doesn't have to be perfect. I'll show you why here in the next step. But we do want that to be visible. And that's close enough. You're really not going to end up seeing a lot of that once we resize the image. Once you are finished, click the delete key. Your background will change to a checkerboard pattern. Go up to select and choose none. Step five, we need to change the background color to match that of the ECOS. Now that we have isolated and cleaned up the background there a bit, uh, we just want to make sure that the background matches the background of the ECOS. Uh, so what we're going to do is here on the left hand side you'll see your foreground and background swatches. Click on the foreground swatch and in the dialog box that opens you will notice HTML notation we want to type in B6, B6, B6 and click OK. You will notice your foreground color changes to the same gray color on your ECOS. Step 6, fill in the background to match the ECOS. Now that we have chose our proper gray color, we're going to use the bucket fill tool and we're just going to click in the checkerboard area here. That will fill everything in with the gray color. Again, does not have to be perfect. Step seven, cropping the image. Our next step is to crop the image so there's no extra space around the locomotive. Go up to the image menu and choose auto crop image. Step eight, resizing the image. After cropping, we need to resize the image to the size that is used in the ECOS, which is a very, very small icon. So we will lose a lot of detail in this step, but that is completely normal. From the image menu, choose scale image. In the dialog box that appears, make sure that under image size, the link icon is closed, not 
open. Under height, type in 40 and press the tab button. You will notice that the width automatically changes. If the width is less than 190, we're good to go. If it is more than 190, then you need to type in 190 in the width and let the height auto adjust. In this case though, we were good the first time. Reason we do this is the icon for the ECOS has to be exactly 190 by 40 pixels. Click on the scale button when you are finished. And you will notice it shrinks drastically. This is completely normal. Press the control key. You can zoom in, zoom out. You'll notice it's very, very blocky. That's because on the ECOS, it's a very small icon. You can't see all the detail of your original image on the ECOS. Step nine, resizing the canvas. Our image is the right size now, but we need to change the canvas size so that it is exactly 190 by 40 for use with the ECOS. From the image menu, choose canvas size. The set canvas size dialog box will appear. Our canvas size width, we want to be 190. Our height is already 40. We want our current image to be centered. So in the offset section, make sure you click on center. Click on resize. And you will notice our image is now exactly 190 by 40 pixels. Although we still need to fill in the left and right side, which show up as checker boxes. Step 10. Filling in the voids. Our image and our canvas size are now correct for the ECOS. The last thing we need to do is fill the empty regions shown as a checkerboard with the same color gray that we used earlier. First thing we need to do from the image menu is choose flatten image. The checkerboard pattern should be replaced with whatever your background color is and the entire canvas should now be selected. You'll see our foreground color is still the gray, B6, B6, B6. Go ahead and click on the bucket fill tool and click on each one of those white areas to fill them with the gray. Step 11. Saving your image. Our icon for our ECOS is now complete. We just need to export it from GIMP in the proper format. From the File menu, choose Export As. Towards the bottom of the dialog box that opens, you will see All Export Images. The ECOS requires the image to be in a Windows bitmap or BMP format. From the list, find Windows BMP and left click. On the left hand side, choose where you want to save your icon. In this case, I'm going to put it on my desktop. At the top, where it says name, type in a new name followed by .bmp. Click on the export button. Click on the export button a second time. And as we can see here, my icon.bmp is saved to my desktop. I don't need to save this anymore. Um, I've already exported it. So I'm just going to go ahead and exit out of GIMP. Step 12. Importing the new icon into your ECOS. 
before we can import our newly created icon into the ECOS, make sure the ECOS is plugged into your home network via the RJ45 jack on the back of the unit. Click the Setup button on the ECOS, click on the Setup 1 tab, click on the IP icon. Write down the IP address of your ECOS. Return to your computer and open up a web browser. In the address bar of the web browser, type in the IP address of your ECOS and then press enter. The ECOS browser interface will appear. On the left hand side, click on Loco Images. Then click on User Defined Images. You can have up to 250 user defined icons. On the right hand side, you can see the upload buttons. On the left hand side, it tells you the index 0 through 250 or 249. So let's click on upload. Let's give it a, a description. In this case, we are working on a Chicago Northwestern F unit. Loco type is a diesel and choose file name will allow us to choose our new icon. Typical Windows browser window. I saved mine to the desktop and I called it icon. Either double click on it or single click and say open. You will now see the name and extension next to choose file. Click on submit. It'll say Loco Images Uploaded. And to verify this, click on Loco Images one more time. User Defined Images. Now that index zero is filled with our diesel Chicago Northwestern F unit. Before you go any further, you may want to go ahead and properly shut down your ECOS. Hold the stop button until it comes up and says OK to unplug your ECOS. Do not, under any circumstances, just pull the plug. If you do not shut down your ECOS properly, you risk losing the images that you just imported. Return to your ECOS. Click on one of the select buttons, either left throttle or right throttle. From the selection menu, choose the locomotive you wish to assign your new icon to. As you can see from the screen, a generic icon currently appears. Click on the wrench button, which will take you to the Edit Loco screen. Under Image Type, click on User Defined Images and choose your new image from the drop down box. Click the green check button. You will be returned to the throttle screen and now you will see your new icon is assigned to your locomotive. Again, make sure you shut down your ECOS properly so these changes are not lost. Congratulations! You have just finished creating and importing your first ECOS icon. A printed copy of this tutorial is available on our website at www.locsound.com. Thank you for joining us. I hope you found this tutorial useful. And as always, thank you for choosing ESU.